I'm Tara Bradner, and this is Hopeful Hints, an infertility podcast where you will receive quick, hopeful hints to guide you through infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace as you walk through this journey to fulfill your family vision. Welcome to Hopeful Hints. I'm your host, Dr. Tara Bradner, and today I'm going to share with you my top five tips for surviving the two-week wait. This truly can be the hardest and longest two weeks of your life. There's so many emotions that are occurring during this time that I just want to start by validating. There's a difference between somebody who perhaps is not going through infertility and experiencing the two-week wait versus you who has went through perhaps treatment or loss or failed treatments and you're now in the two-week wait. There's something about seeing a negative test month after month after month that truly puts you into the grieving process. I talked about this when I testified with legislation that going through infertility is like experiencing these five stages of grief month after month every time you see that negative test. So today I am sending you extra love, care, and support. Please remember my inbox is always open for you guys. If you need someone to talk to during this two-week wait, please message me on Instagram or schedule a free 20-minute consult call with me and we can utilize this time just to connect and allow me to provide some extra support for you. Let's get started. Tip number one, symptom management. I want you to understand from the beginning that everyone can and will have different symptoms during the two-week wait or none at all. Very confusing, right? So this can be very hard to mentally digest, especially if you have experienced a miscarriage or failed treatment. I am sending extra love to you guys because it truly puts you in a whole different situation and setting going into this two-week wait. In addition, if you're on medication such as progesterone, the side effects of that medication are the same as pregnancy because when you are pregnant, the placenta begins to take over progesterone production, which causes the same symptoms as the medication of progesterone. Common symptoms include light cramping in your pelvis area, fatigue, nausea, headaches, breast tenderness, and food aversions or changes. Tip number two, commit to a book, podcast, hobby, or even plan a mini getaway within this time frame. We need to keep your mind occupied. I personally had a list of things that I had to get done around the house that I simply was putting off. It's those little things that kind of accumulated that I decided I was going to use my two-week waits, multiple waits that I've had, uh, to get those things done. So here's what my list looked like. Cleaning out the junk door, all five closets where things had just been thrown into, we had a storage room with boxes that had stuff in it from when we moved like three years earlier that needed to be went through. Clearly, I did not need those items. I rearranged my closet, got rid of clothes that I no longer was wearing. I organized our tub over door. It was so bad, half embarrassing. I also rearranged some cupboards and just got rid of things that we didn't use anymore. Tip number three, avoid testing unless you can stay neutral with the outcome. This means that you will be okay with whatever that test shows. You will remind yourself that the final result will come at the end of the two weeks. And even if the test initially shows negative, know that you're not out of the race until the end of those two weeks with the final test result. If you have completed infertility treatments, this may puts you in a different position where you've read or seen or heard that your friend got a positive on as early as day five and some won't even get the slightest positive until their test stage. Patients also tend to compare HCG levels with others and there's so much that goes into HCG levels. 
They're even showing that your BMI plays a role in your progesterone levels. So if someone tends to have just a naturally higher BMI, your levels may start out lower than somebody who has half the BMI that you do. So I really just want to encourage you that if you choose to test early, you will not be discouraged. If it shows a negative, you will wait till that testing date. Tip number four, be gentle with yourself during this time. You have done everything possible that you could up to this point to ensure the outcome of a positive pregnancy test. Be gentle with the words that you're speaking to yourself. Be kind to your body and do not second guess what you may have done or not done to impact the outcome. I remember I was actively doing CrossFit during our miscarriage and I blamed lifting weights constantly on the cause of that miscarriage. It took a lot of work and several years for me to overcome that and truly realize that it was not what I did. There was nothing I could have done differently with that situation to impact the outcome. Please provide yourself with some extra love and self-care during this time. And tip number five, surround yourself with support and lean into it during this time. Support may look differently for everyone, but it should feel safe. When thinking of who could support you during this time, it is a safe person that you can text during this way and share that you're feeling anxious, scared, or whatever your emotion may be. Another option is to join a virtual or in-person support group and connect with others like-minded women who are possibly even going through a two-week wait as well. Most of these groups do include a licensed counselor. Support may look like emotional support or support groups or friends or family. Many have family systems in place that are their support group and lean into them during this time. Others, it may be your spouse and a friend. Truly look to those who support you in other areas of your life in hard times during this time as well. I want to encourage you to also utilize me. Drop into my direct messages, send me a message, connect with me somewhere during this time if you need extra support or someone to speak to who's been there and truly gets it. Do not hesitate to lean on me during this time. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Hopeful Hints. I will see you back here next week, Tuesday. If you enjoyed today's show, please head over and hit subscribe or leave a review for Hopeful Hints and Infertility Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week, Tuesday.